When I started seven years ago out of residency, I came in and was impressed at the volume that we were already seeing at that point. Our emergency department sees close to 110,000 patients a year. I brought you into the hospital today. Sure, Mr. Pratt. When I started, we were already extremely busy, seeing about 270 patients a day. But in the last couple of years, it's pretty routine for us to see a 340, 350, closing on a 400 in, in some days. And although that is, you know, 30, 40 percent increase, the hospital just really isn't built for that necessarily. Hey, Connor. Howdy, Kim. How are you doing? Good. How are you? Good. Partly our volume is because of Brockton and Quincy closing and then Compass Medical Center closing has caused us to have like an uptick in people like searching for primary care. We've had to place patients where we never had to place patients before. We put them in recliners, so if they're able to sit in rec recliners it gives us you know, more spaces than actually putting a regular bed in there. And we understand that everybody doesn't feel well, but sometimes we have to prioritize patients. So unless they're critically ill or a trauma, they wait, you know, six, eight hours sometimes to be seen by a doctor. I mean, it sounds like just kind of working static and stuff, but... It's been extremely stressful. I mean, we have a fantastic team of physicians, advanced practice clinicians who are nurse practitioners and PAs and, and nurses, um, but everyone has really felt a significant increase in their stress levels in the last couple of years. I think from the moment that the, the patient comes in, we have a, a great nursing staff who is kind of the eyes and ears. Uh, we have radiology just down the hall. We talk with them a lot because we're getting a lot of x-rays and CAT scans. The hospital has numerous subspecialties that we're working in collaboration with multiple times a day. People are choosing to stay locally instead of going into town because they know they don't have to. Our affiliation with the Brigham, with Dana-Farber, I feel that they're more comfortable now just staying close to home. That's what I love so much about working here. Between like the physician's assistants, the nurse practitioners, case managers, social workers, like we all just work very closely together. Okay, good morning. Um, yesterday we saw nine visits. MIH is about bringing care to the patient. First thing in the morning, we um, check our schedule for the day, see the patient assignments, we split it up, um, touch base with the paramedics after we choose which patients and which visits we're gonna do. We start to formulate an initial plan. We work with the paramedics out in the field and we collaborate with them. Hi, Elaine, how are you? Oh, I'm fine, feeling so much better. Excellent. We're able to treat almost anything in the home. We can do EKGs, we can draw blood, we can do swabs for COVID, for RSV, we can do wound swabs if somebody you know has a wound that needs to be cultured. We do urine analysis a lot where we pick up specimens. Uh, we're able to treat with all kinds of different medicine. If we don't have it on our truck, we just go to the pharmacy, pick it up. All your symptoms have resolved. Um... We speak to the patient as if we were in an exam room or in a hospital room. We're able to see the patient when it's a safety net for the patients for their chronic issues. It benefits the health system as well because it has been able to decompress um, both the ED and inpatient units. And we're urgent care on wheels. We're able to take care of people at their house. I mean, who wouldn't want to stay home and be cared for instead of going to the emergency room or the hospital? On the day of the Derby Street incident, we received 16 patients within 45 minutes to our facility. We knew how to prepare for this, and people that came from different areas in the hospital, surgeons, anesthesia, orthopods, all came down to assist with this. It was amazing. Everyone knew how to do their job, and then everyone did their job. As a military general surgeon, what I saw on November 21st was as good as any best day we had in Afghanistan. I don't think we could have actually performed it better had we scripted it. We are a level two trauma center and we are the only level two trauma center in our region. We have the same bar for patient care, patient outcomes, um, protocols that every uh, top program has. That also requires at the hospital, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, we have fellowship trained trauma surgeons that are here to uh, provide 
emergency resuscitation, life-saving interventions, and go to the operating room if necessary. Thanks to Dr. Driscoll, we've been able to provide a capability where people who otherwise would have had to transfer into town, which would delay life-saving care, we now can provide that as soon as these patients hit the door. So what it does is it brings, it really brings Boston level medical care out to the community out here in South Weymouth. So now we have the capability to do damage control surgery. We have coverage from neurosurgery, orthopedics, critical care, interventional radiology to help patients that are bleeding out has come to the forefront in emergency medicine. We are here to serve and take care of our patients. If we don't have the resources that we need to do that, there's going to be a delay in care, and that many times costs lives. People should feel comfortable knowing that wherever they are in this region, no matter what happens to them in a traumatic way, we have the capability here to save their lives.